first fish of the day. It's a 13 inch, 13 inch large mouth lick. It's just under a pound, 0.97. Got this little guy, he's 12 and a half inches. So this is a good example of what the, the kind of fish the wildlife department wants us to keep. It's 14 inches. Now it's gonna be in the realm, under 16 inches. Keep it, take it home, flay it, eat it. And any fish I've ever caught that I'm gonna eat, I immediately wanna dispatch and bleed and then put them on ice as soon as I'm off the water. The water here, of course, you know, it's December 2nd today? Yeah. December 2nd today and the water's plenty cold. I don't know what the temperature is, but probably in the low 50s. Right behind the eyes, in the middle of the skull, a quick wrap uh, dispatches the fish immediately. They give you a little jiggle and a shake like that, you know they're done. If you look at the bottom of the fish, all these gills come into the center here and that center line, you put your knife under the whole deal. Just cut that right there and you'll see the, yeah, the blood comes out right here. And he's gonna bleed out in the, in the basket. And they'll be blood free when we flay them out. First thing I do is wipe these paper towels and get the slime off of there. Do yourself a favor, make the fish a little easier to handle. Of course, we were doing this in your backyard or out on the boat dock, you probably have a clamp to throw it into and you're probably using an electric fillet knife, but we're gonna do it the old fashioned way, just like we had to do it at home. Your initial cut's gonna be down the side, behind that gill plate, behind the pectoral fin and the pelvic fin. You can kind of see, if you move these, you can feel the bony, see the bony structures back here. You're going to kind of go to an angle behind those and come in behind these fins here and cut kind of in an angle so you're not cutting on top of the scales but at an angle with the scales so you're getting less once you get an incision i like to cut with the top of that leech lake fillet knife or you can flip your knife around and cut from the inside out so you're not just grinding your fillet knife edge against those scales. The scales are harder than bone. So there you get your first angle cut. You see the cut, you see the dorsal fin here and the spine sits in here just like this. You're gonna cut down along the side, the spine. It's easiest if you come in under the scales, you aim toward that dorsal fin and you're cutting up and out underneath the scales. You're not cutting onto them. And when I'm poking in there, see that? I'm hitting the spine right there. I'm hitting the spine. The spine is an edge and it, you're following the bones of those fins all the way down here. And you're touching that spine all the way down. Now you're past the cloaca, here's the anal fin, and you can slide that blade, you can feel it, slide that blade right over the top of the spine and out by the, by the anal fin. You keep it flat to the spine, come all the way back, almost to the tail, but not all the way out. Now, if you look in here, see all that nice white meat? Doesn't that look yummy? I like to hold my fillet knife like a pen. And I just aim it in here, along the rib. Just follow that rib along. There's kind of a little bump here up at the top. You gotta to kind of work your way around that. Don't let it push you too far out. Force yourself back in on that rib. You don't have to cut into the gut cavity. Cut that belly meat out and you're almost back to that anal fin where you started. And there you go. You got a flay cut off, see? You trimmed, you came down in here, you followed the rib, went over the top of the rib, the oil fin, cut back, and you just cut the meat and the skin off of that rib cage down here to the anal fin. I mean, we pretty much stayed out of the guts. And this fish is not bloody because we killed it on the boat and bled it in the basket before we put it on ice. Makes all the difference, and I'll show you why here in a second. And you just get this started at the end. If you goof up and break it off the tail, just just make yourself a little something to hold it with. It's not hard. And if your knife is a little bit dull or whatever, just work it. Work it back and forth. And as long as you're holding it flat to the surface of the skin, 
and that skin's not rolling up you, on you like mine is right now. <laughs> just, you can hold that down if it's getting stubborn and just angle up on your, your knife a little bit and voila, you have a filet. That is a Bass Filleting 101. Then you just do the other side, same deal. That is what a bass fillet should look like. Now here's a fillet from a fish that we kept alive, or we treated like most people treat their fish. And we didn't kill it on the boat. We just put it in the cooler when we got back to the ramp. And it died a slow death in the cooler on the ice. You see the difference here? It was bloody. It still had some reflex when we cleaned it. This is the fish that died in the cooler. These are the ones that we killed on the boat and bled out. If that doesn't show you something, it's just... It's not that these fish are going to be rotten 24 hours from now, but there's more material in here, more enzymes that can work to add that fishy flavor to your fish. These are just cleaner and easier to handle. Um, and they're going to taste better, I'm sure, in the long run. Um, I guess I, that's subjective, but I choose these over this one every day. Mm -hmm.